Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today as we paint Raider Studios 1 to 20th scale Ceratosaurus. This impressive model was designed and sculpted by Jonathan Raider, someone I've been a fan of ever since I landed in this hobby. Jonathan started his paleo art journey at 14 years old when he volunteered at the Tate Geological Museum in Wyoming. There he fell under the tutelage of paleo artist Russell Hawley. Under Russell's guidance, Jonathan gained extensive knowledge in animal anatomy and spent many hours researching how these creatures of the past may have moved or behaved. In his 23 years of sculpting, Jonathan has amassed a beautiful portfolio of prehistoric models. Using Super Sculpty and Avis Epoxy products, Jonathan strives to place whatever creature he's working on in the context of how they may have actually lived, so that the final product is not just a sculpt of the animal, but a snapshot of its life. Currently, Jonathan is nearing completion of his PhD in biology, and I hope we'll get to see some new models from this talented artist. Now that we've got a glimpse of the artist behind the model, let's take a closer look at Jonathan's Ceratosaurus. When I first saw this sculpture, I was immediately drawn to the model's pose, which showcased the Ceratosaurus neutrally standing. There's a hint of curiosity as if it's watching its next meal in the distance. The body is adorned with beautifully sculpted osteoderms lining the top and side of the body. The tail has a nice curl to it, and I love the way the face is sculpted, giving it a feel of a real living animal. This kit does come with a beautifully sculpted base with two footprints to set the model in. As with all my models, we start with a gray primer. I will say I'm trying a few new techniques in this video, and during the painting process, I had a few traumatizing accidents, but we'll get to that a bit later. The first coat after the primer is a beige or tan color. Here I'm using a Vallejo beige. After the beige has dried, I apply a pale gray wash to the entire model to create some depth and bring out some of the details. I'm applying this fairly heavily as I'll be cleaning it up after, and I just love how the sculpted details pop right out when we apply this wash. Just check out some of the details on this head sculpt. Next is a dry brush with a beige, which is not really showing up on camera, but you get the point. Here I'm trying a new technique. I'm using a toothbrush to flick spots onto the model. I saw this technique from paleo artist Tyler Keeler and thought I'd give it a shot. The end result is a freckled look all over the model. Another new technique I'm trying is using Liquid Mask by Vallejo to create a pattern on the top side of the body. This mask will be applied and peeled off later to reveal the pattern. Here you can see me painting on the main pattern. This is a fairly slow drying product and you'll want to use an old brush. The nice thing about this product is if you mess up, you can always peel it off and reapply. I wanted to mention that the pattern I'm painting was inspired by this beautiful Ceratosaurus artwork by Mario Lenzis. I'd like to take this time to thank all the new viewers and subscribers for joining us. Thank you for giving this channel a shot. If you feel I deserve it, I'd appreciate a like or share. And if you'd like to see more in the future, please consider subscribing. I'd also like to thank Kayakasaurus again for sharing my last couple videos. I've been a fan of his work for a number of years and it was very generous of him to share my work. As I finish getting the major pattern blocked in, I begin to add these smaller patterns in between. Here's a quick shot of what the blocked in pattern looks like. Now that we have the pattern set, I'm going to add multiple layers with the lightest shade on the bottom and work my way up to the darkest shade on top. I'm starting off with a dark yellow, making sure I leave a healthy amount of beige on the underbelly. Next, I'm using an acrylic ink by Liquitex called Red Oxide. I felt this had a nice, rusty, orangey-red look to it, and I thought I'd give it a shot. As I was completing this layer, I was afraid the legs were looking a bit too much like tandoori chicken. I hope the next few layers are able to break these colors up a bit. German Red Brown is the next layer, and as you can see, I'm doing my best to leave a little bit of space between each layer, and I think they're blending quite nicely. Mm -hmm. 
The last layer I'm adding is sapia, and I'm just hitting the top portion of the model. As you can see, a little accident in the background. I know it looks like I lopped off one of my fingers, but I actually just tipped over the red oxide and it spilled everywhere. Here, I'm trying a different flicking technique to create freckle spots. I'm using a toothpick and a brush with some watered down black to create some dark freckles on the model. Now the moment of truth to see if the liquid mask actually worked. I'm using rubber gloves to get some good traction and I was so relieved when it actually started peeling off. This was actually the funnest part of the entire project. It kind of reminded me of how my mom used to let me peel off her nightly face mask when I was a kid. It's pretty cool to reveal the pattern I created earlier. Here's a quick tip. Make sure you remember which parts of the dinosaur you set the pattern on. What a bloody mess. But here's a shot of our revealed pattern. It's time for a wash. I'm adding in watered down brown wash and I felt like I had to dull the pattern down just a bit to bring everything together. To break up the look of the tandoori chicken legs, I add some burnt umber wash to the scoots of the feet. This wash will also bring out some of the beautiful detail that Jonathan has sculpted in. To make the face a bit more interesting, I'm adding some vibrant colors to the facial horns. I start with a yellow, and then add some red oxide, and then finish it off with a hint of sapia. As I let this dry, I'm adding some brown wash to the face to bring out some of those details. And then add a little bit of flesh wash to this pouch of skin. Next, I add some white to the teeth. I'm being as careful as I can to get this as clean as possible. While this dries, we then hold our breath and add a little bit of yellow to its tiny eye. While we wait for this to dry, we'll take our dino to the nail salon. I'm painting all the nails a solid black. Let's add some brown wash to the teeth, as I don't imagine this dinosaur boasting perfectly pearly white teeth. I'm trying to push the wash up to the top of the tooth and clean off some of the wash near the bottom of the teeth. Here I'm using a toothpick for the pupil, and then I use a simple black to freehand a design on the facial horns. To finish off the Ceratosaurus, I use a toothpick with a variety of watered down colors to add some random spots on the model. Survey says it's looking pretty good. On to the base. We'll set a palette of dark to light earth tones, and I'm using a new technique that I believe is called wet blending. I picked up these techniques through various YouTube channels. It's kind of a mix mash of other great painters tips and tricks. I apply Rhinox Hide first and I'll want to work fast to ensure the paint stays wet as I blend in the other colors. As it's still wet, I'm mixing in some mahogany brown and some flat brown and then just blending it in. Next, I use some Terra Earth colors and blending that in and it creates a variety of colors and tones on the base. Here I add a touch of light green to certain parts of the model and then work to blend those in. It gives kind of a mossy look to certain parts of the base. For the rocks, I start with a black base coat and smash in some green that I'll wet blend in. I saw this technique on a miniature painting video on YouTube, but I can't for the life of me find that channel right now. Uh, if I figure it out, I'll be sure to leave that YouTube channel in the description below. When these dry, I dry brush a coat of pale flesh onto the rock. Yes, I did say pale flesh. 
That wasn't the first color that came to mind when highlighting a rock, but it worked out beautifully. To unify the colors of the rock, I give the stones a watered down black wash. The final touch is adding some green to the base, giving it a touch of foliage. I'm using some school glue and picking spots that I think the green would make the most sense. I'm using Light Green Foliage by Woodland Scenics, a great new product that's the first time I've ever tried it. Remember that traumatizing accident I spoke about earlier? Well, I had everything painted up and I was gonna give a final coat of matte finish. However, I accidentally grabbed the gray primer instead and sprayed the model. Holy hell, I cried that night. But I had to accept my mistake and it took a few hours to fix it up. To finish off the model, I add some gloss to the teeth and eyes and this guy's ready to be displayed on the shelf. I hope you all enjoyed the video and thank you for watching it all the way through. If you feel I deserve it, I'd appreciate a like and if you'd like to see more, please consider subscribing. I'd also like to thank Jonathan Rader for sculpting this incredible model. If you'd like to pick one up yourself, you can visit dansdinosaurs.com. The link will be in the description below. I'm currently working on a unique project for my next video and it'll be quite different from these painting tutorials. But if you love prehistoric life, I think you guys will enjoy it. Stay tuned and have yourself a great day everyone.